hey tolerators. This is to all the men I've tolerated before with Nan. I can't say my own goddamn name, Dina. It's, it's a rough life. It's a rough life right now. Man. <sighs> this is to all the men I've tolerated before with Natalie Katona and say your own name because I can't say mine. <laughs> and Dina al <laughs> On this podcast, Dina and I explore some of the impactful relationships we've had with men. We then thank them, or don't, for the lessons they gave us and leave them with some positive manifestations we hope for their future. Uh, Today, we'll be talking about this brand new subcategory of men that people who are younger than me call simps. I know nothing. Oh, yes. I know nothing about simp culture. You want to know what I know? I have a simp army. <laughs> I have a simp army on the internet. Like that terri- the amount of simp, it terrifies you. That terrifies it's pretty, me. Because there's some good things to it. As I lo- well, good. I'm glad you're going to be talking positively about this subcategory of men because the more I look into simps, the more I'm like, no, this isn't for me. These aren't my people. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely got some downsides for sure. But yeah, I do have a lot of uh, sims. All right. So in case any of our listeners are 30, like I am. Well, I'm 32 <laughs> now. <laughs> but in case you two are an actual grown up and you're like, what the fuck is a simp? Don't. Don't get out of our podcast to look it up on Urban Dictionary. I did it for us. (laughs) Yep, let's hear it. What is a simp? A simp is a slain insult for men who are seen as too attentive and submissive to women, especially out of a failed hope of winning some entitled, that's why I get pissed off, sexual attention or activity from them. So the word simp is meant to troll young men for doing anything for a girl to get some action he supposedly deserves. And that's my whole problem with simps. Here's the thing, though. Like, the word simp gets thrown around for people who just interact positively with a woman. And that's the thing that bothers me about it. I know. Why can't we just call the men who treat us correctly like actual men like that's what i'm saying like a guy could literally like say something positive to you like you could post a selfie like a empowering selfie or something and the guy will say yeah you go girl or whatever he says that is positive and then somebody will comment on on his comment and be like fucking simp (laughs) like what are we supposed to like shit on women all the time time. can we not have male males that actually have positive fucking comments on our lives like what the hell i like and i do need there to be like a clear boundary between simps and allies because my gut tells me about these simp men is that they're just the guys who, when I was younger, were the friend zone guys. Like, uh, you're supposed yeah. to want to fuck me. I memorized your favorite type of ice cream. And now nice guys always finish last. Wah! That's my Like view. the guys who learn everything about you and then try and use it against you. Yeah, those are the shitty simps. But yeah. there are simps... That genuinely just like like the person, like genuinely just enjoy the person's company. So I don't, I don't know. Simp is like it's controversial. I yeah. feel like we're gonna ha- like everyone needs to pop off on this episode about what their viewpoint of a simp is because I feel like there's no clear de- definition or like you said, we use the term incorrectly. I think people use it like they'll call a guy who just you know is says something positive about a woman a simp because they're like jealous in some way like they they feel attacked or something i'm like calm down because because when women shine that means that men are in the shadows where you belong (laughs) get in your fucking cave 
Ugh! Sim. Man goblins. So I've never dated a sim. This will not be a yeah. person that I've had a relationship with. This is a person that I probably had a wretched codependency friendship with. And when yeah. I think of my sim, the phrase weak constitution just pops into my head <laughs> oh you going straight for it ain't you you're like i'm skipping go i'm going straight there you know my simp am i ron when you think of this man do you think like strong hefty barbarian man no i think weak fragile ego right he's a whiner he's a whiner <laughs> listeners Let me take you to this week with this sim. This man promised me that he knew how to make our logo and he tried once and it was hard. So he just avoided me for months. (laughs) Fuck. And then when I flat out asked him, so is it too hard? Because I can, there are other people who probably have this skill set and won't lie to me about it. He said, well, no, see, I'm not, I'm not saying you should find someone, but like, if you do find someone, they could probably do it. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> what is he even saying? What? He ha- I have a slew. The backbone of a gummy bear. I also feel like I have a simp army of men that I don't want <laughs> because I have a slew of men in my life. Who, instead of just telling me no, because they're worried that no will make me mad or sad or, like, ruin my day, they just avoid me. I hate that. Why do they make the decision for you? It's like they're protecting you from yourself. And you're like, allow me to protect myself. Like, I can take care of myself. Part of it with this simp is I know that if I was some... Baywatch looking bombshell he would take like night classes to figure out what it was I needed him to do because he's that simp if you are the classic manic pixie dream girl like he'll literally do whatever he needs to do to get your attention and it's so gross well here's the thing and I think a common attribute of many of these people is that they uh, they mold themselves yes. to whoever they are interested in. Like, they don't have a strong personality, so they'll do whatever they they, they need to do to, to get you to like them. And they think that that means become you. Like, yes. like everything you like. Be obsessed with everything you're obsessed with. Like, that kind of thing. And, like, these women that I watch him simp over want nothing to do with him and i'm like here i am trying to raise our cat child with you and i'm trying to like let you stay at my place so you can visit your ohio friends and like actively trying to give a shit about you because we used to be very good friends but because your penis doesn't want anywhere near me and my vagina wouldn't let it even think about it you can't Google something for me. Like, you can't take the extra step to figure out the hard thing or, like, answer my phone calls. And that's where I'm at this week. But let's talk about how he treats these women who aren't even interested in him, but he puts them on this pedestal. He's that guy. He's the, like, ooh, she's wonderful. And he calls me crying about them. And I'm like, they don't even like you. (laughs) Have some pride. That's a, that's what I think simps are lacking is pride. Could we get some pride? So I'm not going to go into this girl's whole business because she's not my friend. So she doesn't deserve that. And what if she accidentally becomes a tolerator and then she's like, oh, fuck, now my business is on the Internet. I don't want that. I'm a woman who supports women. So I'm just going to tell it in basic terms. Okay. My, my idiot simp meets this woman while she is tending bar at a restaurant that his buddy's relative's funeral luncheon is at. So my simp is supposed to be supporting his friend 
during a funeral. And what's this idiot doing? He's Hitting playing on the bartender. With, yeah. He's playing with children in the eyeline of the bartender so he can make eye contact with her and be like, aren't I so cute? Look how cute I am. That's gross. <laughs> People are funeral. grieving. You're Fuck. at a funeral. <laughs> at a fucking funeral. Damn. You're at a fucking That's funeral picking up of another shit. level. That is desperation of yeah. like... To the 19th degree. Yes. Holy shit. Then he's hours away from where he's currently win- living. He's a- I don't know why I would say winning. He's never winning. <laughs> so Damn. He- he's hours away from where he's currently living. He gives this woman his phone number. They exchange numbers. So I guess his okay. ploy worked. I would, seems to be- I would have yelled across yeah. the bar, gross, you're at a funeral. <laughs> Don't hit on me. You were clearly at a funeral. God, that's awkward. They exchange text messages back and forth for a while. And he, Dina, he's head over heels. Because as soon as a pretty woman gives him an ounce of attention, it's, it's one, it's his one true love destiny. It's his destiny. Okay. So he knows nothing about this woman. He knows barely anything about this woman. He goes to visit her for a weekend. So he oh. he hangs out with her for one weekend. After like weeks upon months of him being like, I think we should get together. I think we should get together. He wears her down. <laughs> he wears her down. Fuck, he broke her. <laughs> he Shit. fucking broke her. He fucking broke her. Okay. <laughs> he gets there. This is the part of her business I will tell because I find it hilarious. He gets there. He goes to make himself an ice water. He opens his freezer. Dina, she's got a fucking dead bird in her freezer. (laughs) Whoa. What? What? She's got a dead bird just Mm -hmm. chilling in her freezer. Um, I'm sure you're going to tell me why. I hope you are because I have a lot of questions. Because I made that same face. I was like, what the fuck? the fuck like i'm a witch but i don't deal in necromancy so fuck okay go on please i tell i look at him and i'm like because i could see that like not that these women aren't worth a damn but like i they're not on the pedestal for me so i look at him and i'm like bro why does she have dead animals in her freezer like why are you just gonna gloss over that like it's cute And he's like, well... Serial killer vibes. Right. Well, she's trying (laughs) to get into taxidermy. So she's into taxidermy and she knows how to do it or she's trying to figure out, like, what is it? Like, and he's like, well, she hasn't, like, looked into it or anything yet. But she knows that she will one day. I was like, so she's already hoarding dead animals for a hobby that she doesn't actually have? Whoa! Dude, hold on. Because I'm trying to, like, I don't want to shit on people's hobbies. But, like, can you imagine one day you're just sitting around and you're like, oh, I need a new hobby. What should I do? Mm, Maybe I'll think about doing taxidermy. Immediately goes and gets a a dead bird from somewhere. Where did that come from? Did she kill it? I'm concerned about where it came from. Second of all, why are we jumping? I feel like there's a step before you go get the dead bird. Maybe learn a little bit about taxidermy. What the fuck is happening? I was not not ready for this. If you and I we're in the car driving to sushi and we saw like a roadkill squirrel and I was like pull over because I'm really thinking about getting into taxidermy <laughs> I feel like there's a license you need for taxidermy like isn't there a lot of chemicals yeah, I don't involved think... <laughs> like... yeah I don't think the first step is to go get a dead animal like I feel I... like there's probably a little bit more preparation learning like professional type things that go on with this like right i don't think this is a hobby you just jump into i don't think that's it like i don't think so but here we are (laughs) yeah okay so then also because of things that are out of her control they don't actually like get to go out to dinner or explore where she lives or whatever 
She has some, like, family shit that happens that traps them into the apartment. I ask him, I ask the simp, does that mean that you got laid for three days straight? Because if I'm trapped in my house with a man that I guess I'm casually talking to on the phone, I guess we're fucking, we're trapped. What else is there to do? Netflix can take me so far. And he's like, no. What was the point of this weekend? (laughs) So... I was like, okay. And honestly, like, that's when his hero complex, like, comes in. And he's like, and because her family causes all of this drama, I think she should come and live with me on my next, uh, my next, like, little place that I have to live, uh, because I'm moving. And, like, he wants her to move states away with him. They've spent one weekend together. And it was a shit show weekend. Where all this drama happened. And there's dead animals Damn. involved. So he calls me every time she won't answer his text. And I'm like, do you think it's because she don't want to live with you? Like, <laughs> she don't want... Because maybe you spent two and a half days with her and you were like, we should live together. <laughs> like, I can't get past the dead bird. Like, no one can. <laughs> like, if I was meeting someone for the first time, man or woman, yeah. let me just say, man or woman, uh-huh. and you had a dead anything right. in your freezer, and you didn't immediately have the best answer and rationale for it, mm-hmm. uh, yo, I'm out. And like, that's a red flag. I'm probably out anyway if right. you have a good answer I for it. Like I can't have a dead bird in my freezer with my Stouffer's lasagna, like, because they live right. in apartments. There's no, like, garage freezer where you're hoarding your dead animals in case you get a new hobby. It's just the dead bird sitting next to your Hazendas. No. <laughs> That's a bit. That's the biggest red flag I've ever heard of in my entire fucking life. That and her family circumstances have you holed up in an apartment for an entire weekend because you can't leave. So oh, that seems weird. So that's instance number one. Instance number two insults me personally. So he comes to stay with me so he can visit us and like you know see people or whatever, and he takes me out to dinner to uh our favorite sushi place the place where he introduced me to how to order and eat sushi our waitress is beautiful she has maybe like an eastern european ish accent she has an accent okay i'm trying to update my friend on the months that have the year that has gone by he's asking me questions he ain't listening Cause he's just watching the pretty girl walk around the restaurant. And because she has to smile at us cause it's her job, he's decided they're in love. So Dina, she drops off the check and he, cause he's paying, right? Cause like I'm letting him right. stay with me and he's using right. that as like a power play. He's like, Oh no, no, I, I'm paying for this for me and my friend. But please let me tell you that I find you so pretty. That I'm sad to no longer live in Ohio. Jesus. And I'm just looking at him. And I'm like. Uh, That's the creepiest uh, thing I have ever heard. My child to someone who is working. Working. So he's proud of himself. And she walks away to do her job. And he's like. Meh, look, did you see what I did there? Did you see what I pulled off? And I was like. Yeah cool. You're her workplace harasser today. How do right, you feel exactly. about that? Exactly. Oh, and he's God. Like, he's like, she liked it. She giggled. I was like, she's at work and needs you to tip her. <laughs> and it's awkward and ugh, on the spot. I'm like, you're an idiot. You can't just fall in love with these women every time your pee-pee feels something. <laughs> oh, my God. So I have to explain to him what workplace harassment is. And do you know what he says to me after? I'm like, you just like harassed her at her job. Like her job is to bring us sushi and get tipped. That is her job. Her job isn't to stroke your sad ass ego and be right. like, oh, I'm pretty. You're pretty. Uh, move to Ohio for me. And then you probably would. Uh, he would. And <laughs> he would. Time, he would. Because he's the biggest simp he's in the, the world. Simp. And he looks at me. And he's like, I think, you know, I think that women like it when you call them pretty. Like, I'm sure if you were ever called pretty, like if people called you pretty ever, you would like it. 
and <gasps> Dina the de- the demons took me. Oh <laughs> shit! I would have flipped the table, and me, I would have been like, "Fuck you, I, motherfucker!" I raised myself against that table, and I launched, and I was like, "Are you insinuating that people don't call me pretty?" <laughs> And then I told that asshole, I was like, I told I'm pretty every goddamn day of my existence. I don't I am the fucking Kate Middleton of my office. People can't understand how I look so good all the time. And he's like, he's like, I'm sure people have called you pretty at some point. And I was like, every day. What the fuck? He, like, straight took his foot and inserted it right. into his mouth. Right. Like, I'm like, every day. <laughs> every, the demon comes out. Every fucking day. Like, every day. He had the nerve. He had the nerve to insinuate that people don't think I'm pretty. <laughs> and That's I. So fun. And I told him, and I was like, and all the days that people don't tell me I'm pretty, I tell myself I'm pretty because I'm motherfucking gorgeous. You fucking oh idiot. <laughs> the and audacity I'm, of anybody to say that. What in the world? And honestly, that's when I started to pull away. I have to clap because my cat's trying to poison herself with chocolate. Penelope, that is my <laughs> Christmas candy. <laughs> Why is she trying to poison herself for attention? <laughs> Honestly, animals would just die if they didn't have us. Right. So, so anyways, like, that's when I started to pull away. Because I can't. If the only value you see in women is getting your dick wet, but they have to meet some perfect mold of a woman for you to even give a shit about them. Like, the audacity that it would floor him or he couldn't comprehend that people think I'm gorgeous because I'm not his, like, cookie cutter. What's that stupid movie that created the manic pixie dream girl? Scott Pilgrim looking motherfucking woman. Yeah. It just hurt my soul. And that's when I was like, I can't with you anymore. I can't. Like, this is, it. for one thing, it's disrespectful to pretty women, too. Like, it's disrespectful to my sisters and the cause that you're only nice to women because you're lonely and you need a love story. And assuming that women want that or you need that, mm-hmm. like, oh, I think they like being called. Well, okay, but they don't need you to say that to them. Right. They don't need some person telling them that they're pretty for them to actually feel pretty. Right. They like, don't. he was doing, like, he was being charitable. Sometimes, Nanley. Like, he got, like, real uppity. Sometimes, Nanley. And I know you don't know this because it doesn't happen to you. But sometimes, Nanley, I just really feel... Like, women enjoy being told they're pretty. We only care if women, other women think we're pretty because we know that y'all are idiots and you're gross. I only care when other women think I'm pretty. Hard take. <laughs> exactly. Honestly. Honestly. And that's why I don't like simps. Because, like, it's, like, this, like, manipulative, like, I'm only nice to you because I'm trying to get into your pants. I'm the pants goblin. And, like, (laughs) so what happens when I do fuck you? And, like, you gonna stop being nice? (laughs) Right. And I don't particularly enjoy being put on a pedestal either. No. Because I'm a normal person. I'm not perfect. I have good qualities and bad qualities and don't just, like, put me up there and, like, it's like you're assuming that I'm this perfect person. Right. I don't don't want that expectation on me. Don't put that on me. Please don't, please don't set me up to let you down. Exactly. It's like they're saying you have to be this way for me to even like you, like, no, this much. I'm like, why do I have to be a perfect person for someone to just enjoy me why can't i just be my gross self and you still be infatuated with me (laughs) yeah that's a whole nother fucking situation like and and again i think we need to start weeding out the term if it's genuine you're an ally you're my friend you care about me it's lovely whatever 
If you're yeah. just doing it with an end goal, you're a simp and you're gross. Like, here's the thing. If a simp is, like, truly a good simp, even once they know the good and the bad things about you, they'll still fucking simp for you. Like, if they know everything and they're still simping, there might be something there. All right. But I still think it's gross because I still feel like, for one thing, it's like, it shouldn't ever be like, I fuck you and compliment you even though you only wash your hair once a week. Motherfucker, you're lucky I wash my hair once a week. (laughs) That's true. I love and care about you even though you only eat Taco Bell. Motherfucker, the world, the country tried to end on this week. Of course I'm getting my last cheesy gordita crunch. Oh yeah, do you still have nacho fries? Yes. (laughs) I kind of want some. Nacho fries are literally what I live for. Yeah, even I've, obviously I don't eat the nacho part, but the fries themselves are really good. They crispy. Like, I don't know what they're crispy and they're seasoned. They're like those seasoned fries. Yeah, I wow. Anyway, we're yeah, dude. I slap over some seasoned fries. Oh, they're. I don't know why we want normal fries. Oh, stupid. Why are not? Why are all fries not seasoned fries? <laughs> what? All right. Why don't we just throw some pepper on the motherfucking fries? Hello. All right, so that's it for Bicep. He enrages me. And I guess if I was prettier, he would do things for me that he actually says that he's going to do. Yeah, <laughs> but that's probably true in this case. Because you know if she, if, if Dead Bird Lady, like, asked him something, what? damn, she must be really hot if she can keep a dead bird in her freezer and still have people... Or, like, I, wanting to get in her pants. Like, that is absolutely terrifying to I me. need a subset of tolerators. I need tolerators who are also taxidermists. And I need to know the process to which you learn taxidermy. And whether or not you hoarded dead animals in your home before you learned that process. I, I want to know at what what is his cutoff? Like, what would have made him stop thinking, like, simping? Like, would he have, like, what if she had a finger? Like, a cut out, like, a a finger in her freezer. Would he just been like, oh, yeah, that seems normal. It's her grandpa's finger and she misses him. (laughs) What? Like, get a picture. Honestly, he's still simping over her. She probably hasn't talked to him in weeks or months. And he's still like, I just don't understand why she won't love me. Because you're weak. Because you have a weak constitution. <laughs> and Maybe have a, your own personality and uh, figure right. out what you actually want in a person. It infuriates me because, like, I'll then ask him things about these women and you know he don't know. I'm like, what do they like to do for fun? I don't know. They won't answer my text. Then why are you in love with them? <laughs> what What do you like to do for fun, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm saying there's some... That's weird as shit. All right, but we can talk about mine. We'll I mean, because I've encountered... <laughs> the word simp gets thrown out around a lot in the online gamer, you know, community. Mm-hmm. And I, I sat around so long this morning trying to figure out what name, what identifier I was going to use for this person. And I have, I have decided upon, because for whatever reason I think it's hilarious, I'm going to use the name Moses. Moses. To just, Moses. He's just parting something. I don't know what he's parting, but he's parting. people go. (laughs) So Moses is one of my online gamer friends. And uh, he, I'm probably daily most definitely weekly gets called a simp by people for mm-hmm. simping for me. Um, he's we're the same we're the same age. We have like the same love, like the same humor. We get a- along really well. And honestly, like, all right, he's one of my closest friends right now, especially in cor- like the times of Corona where I'm not go- able to go out, like, and all this stuff. He's been there for me, and he's a really close friend. Here, it, it does get a little sticky because at w- early in our relationship we liked each other. Mm -hmm. Like we actually generally liked each other, had feelings for one another. Uh, but along the way we just, and I'm not going to go into it, but along the way we just discovered that it's probably not going to work romantically. That's an update. I don't think I know. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah. And so we decided that we're, that's probably not going to work. And so we, but we're still really close friends. And he, you know, nothing changed when we made that decision. When that decision happened, nothing changed. Like we were still very close friends. There was just no, you know, mm-hmm. sexual shit happening basically anymore. So uh, we're, we're just friends. So um, let me tell you why he gets labeled a simp. And it's because he often gives me over the top levels of attention. Like if I post anything, Mm -hmm. if I'm excited about anything, he's there to be excited and support me a hundred percent. And it almost comes off. Like if you don't know him and you don't know me, it comes off as, you know, over the top, you know, it comes off as extra as like, oh my gosh, like, can he really be into the exact same things that she's into? Like, who knows? So it's for that reason that he often gets labeled a simp uh, in our friend groups. But if I were being completely honest, he's a good friend. And I think a lot of people think that a guy and a girl cannot be friends, cannot be close friends. Right. Like he must want to get in my pants, which obviously it's complicated because he didn't want to get in my pants at one point. Right? right. So, but he is, I consider him a genuinely a great person and one of my close friends in this situation. He's one of the dearest people to me right now. Um, and I can talk to him about anything, which is something that I've not been able to do with so many males, even the ones right. that I was actually in a relationship with. But while I do wish that people would like not label him all the time a simp just for like being excited about the things or having things in common with me or hyping me up or whatever, there is a side of it that is toxic. And th- that side is that Moses often blocks me from getting negative interactions. Mm. And that I think goes into white knighting, right? Yeah. You think that a girl needs to be saved or needs to be blocked or whatever. It's like and how that's my toxic. Was like her family makes her sad. She should live with me. What? Everyone's no, family that's not makes how them works. sad. Right. <laughs> Everybody's family sucks balls in some way or another. So like I'm gonna give you an example. A oh, couple boy, examples yeah. actually. First I'm gonna say he will straight up fight someone. If one tiny small inconvenience happens to me online, like if someone says anything even remotely could be maybe interpreted as negative, Mm -hmm. he'll be up in arms, ready to fight at like, even when I'm not fighting about it. Like I'm not, like I can be slightly inconvenienced and have feelings about a slight inconvenience and not have to go and fight somebody about it. It'll just go away. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, in, it's an inconvenience. Like, we don't have to start a fight over everything. He will literally start a fight with that person if I if I confide in him about this. And that has caused a lot of issues. Like, that has really... Because I get upset. I'm like, I didn't mm-hmm. ask you to do this. I didn't want any of this. I didn't want it to escalate. It was just... I was just venting. <laughs> like, yeah. that's literally all it was. So... Another thing is, uh, so if you guys have heard the popular uh, game that's been, it's gained a lot of attention this past year during COVID, Among Us. Um, it's one that I've been playing a lot, but for so I'm sure most people like at least have heard of it. But I'm gonna do a quick synopsis of what Among Us is. Among Us is a um, social game mm-hmm. where there are ten players, and typically two of those players are secretly. Um, killers. They're imposters. So their job, the whole game, is to trick, while everybody's doing these tasks that you're assigned, is to kill all the other players that aren't imposters and not be voted out. Like, don't become, you know, what the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't, uh... Not killed? Maybe, maybe, don't, yeah, no, don't get, uh, don't get voted out. Basically. Oh, that's right. Yeah, don't yeah, let, yeah. don't let people find it's, out that you're the imposter. It's basically that's the whole goal. mafia that we all played in elementary school, but on an app. Right. If you've, if you've played mafia or secret Hitler or any of these games, it's, it's like that. It's a deception game. Mm-hmm. So, um, you're randomly selected each round of if you're imposter or if you're a crewmate. So if I'm imposter and I'm in a game with Moses and he's a crewmate, and I could literally, I have killed someone right in front of him 
and he will not sell me out. He will basically become a third imposter. Like what he, a dumb he dumb. will. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. Like he's, <laughs> he's he literally. No matter what, I could literally murder someone in front of him. He will see it with his own two eyes, and that man will straight lie when it's time to deliberate. I can't, I can't that stand. Ca- I can't stand playing games with people who won't play games the way that games are meant to be played. You exactly. No, and most rational people get upset when this happens. I get upset. I tell him, I'm like, dude, you literally saw me kill. Like, you need to own up to it, basically. Right. And he's like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't I'm do like, it. No, I don't need you. I can't do it. I can't do it. And I'm like, if you can't, people are getting legitimately pissed because they're trying to play the game with the rules that are in play and like all this stuff, but he is going against that. And so, um, it did, it doesn't matter that I want him to stop. He literally will not stop. Like, that's how far it goes. So, um, in that, situation i i'm an adult i can fight my own battles i don't need to be shielded like i don't need someone to protect me i live alone i'm 28 years old like i have i pay my own bills like i didn't ask for any of this so that part can can kind of be frustrating if i'm being 150 percent honest like and i i had a, i had i had to have a conversation with moses about this like genuinely where i was like listen like this is becoming a problem. I'm not asking for you to do these things. I'm asking you to stop doing these things. So please stop. Since then, he has toned down that, you know, he hasn't been doing that as much. I think what, like, infuriates me about the Among Us thing, it's like, dude, I know how to play the game well. Right, exactly. Well, I don't, but that's fine. <laughs> but I don't need someone to protect me. I didn't ask for it. Like, I'm not sitting, sitting over here asking, like, oh, please don't tell them that I'm a... Uh, imposter like if you straight accidentally kill in front of someone else Mm -hmm. then you are then you deserve to be uh you know kicked out that's just the way the game goes like so um i so in the in the example he his feelings for me are definitely genuine like he is my best one of my best friends he's uh, we get along so well, like, we have so much fun together, we can be open and honest, he knows, you know, everything there is to know about me, and he still cares for me, and is there for me in my good times and my bad times. Oftentimes, he can cross a line into my own independence, and that's where the issue comes, because, mm-hmm. you know, for him to be called a simp, in those situations, I think it's deserved, because yeah. he is ignoring all other rationale and logical thinking to merely be positive for mm-hmm. me when there's no reason to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying, I know I'm very bad at explaining it, but I think when he crosses that line, it's too far for me. Oh, yeah. But I would never change our relationship. And, you know, it, it's given me so much. So I appreciate him and love him so much. Uh, but there is, there is, al- you always need boundaries. And, the, and simps, even though their intention, is to be nice and sweet and supportive and whatever. It can cross boundaries. Yeah. And that's the thing. And crossing boundaries does not have to be negative. Like, it can come off as positive. And, like, honestly, I don't need to be handled with kid gloves. Like, right. please, if the answer is no, tell me no. If I'm giving you an out and being like, hey, if you're in over your head about this, I can find someone else to look at it, whatever, and you're just like, well, I am, you know, over my head about this, but I need to make her happy because of my damage. Like, no. Right. Now no one's happy. (laughs) Exactly. Like, give a straight answer, know what you want and who you are, and if you can't or don't want to do something, then don't do it. Like, don't just do it because you are literally simping for another person and you can't say no to them no if you can't say no to someone there's a problem and then like what ends up happening with these simp men is that i start filtering myself and the way that i behave because i view you as a fragile glass fish on a shelf and if i do something that's too abrasive or too bold or too whatever you're going to shatter because you have a weak constitution. It just seems some like it can come off very fake. Yeah. Because I think my last relationship as well, there was uh, to a fault supporting 
um, no matter what, even if it, if they didn't like it, Mm -hmm. I'm like, why wouldn't you just tell me? And then I get confused because I'm just, if you're going along with something and you're doing something with me, I'm going to assume that you want to do it. Yeah. Oh, unless I, you tell me I, like that you don't. I said that to my last relationship over and over again. Like my default is that everything's fine. So if you don't like doing this, you have to say something or else I'm going to assume you're an active participant because it's fine. And like, I think simp culture plays a lot into the, to the way insecurities present in men because it's like well she won't like me unless I'm perfect or telling her yes all the time or whatever and I think with my last relationship it was a little bit of well like I'll never get what I actually want out of a woman so I'll just be fine with whatever the hell she's doing and he didn't like me that's very strange to me is to compromise everything that you want and you need and you like just because you think that no one will like you like well, that's completely it, putting on a mask like that's not even being authentic with someone it, the only reason it's shocking to me is because i'm into my 30s and i'm still encountering it whereas if i was 22 like i did that shit when i was 22 oh yeah like i didn't know who i was at 22 so i was like i'll just be oh, yeah. you I'll just like everything you like. I'll just be perfect all the time. I won't have any negative emotions or anything to say or get sad or cry in front of you or anything at all. Right. Because I'm perfect. Because I'm perfect. But like this like prolonged. And now I'm almost worried that because simp is becoming like a simp culture. Like, uh, justice for the simps in the life. They're never getting laid. It's like, well, it's because they're gross. (laughs) Well, and they're spending most of the time, traditional simps are spending all of their time and energy on one person. They're mm-hmm. not spending any energy on themselves. And that, to me, ladies and gentlemen, is a big red flag. If you are not taking care of yourself and you are only taking care of somebody else, Mm-mm. I, I'm I'm under the assumption you don't know how to take care of yourself. Right. And that's why you're taking care of somebody else. And that is one of my huge red flags. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gone are the days where I live my life in the name of someone else's comfort. Yeah. So I have, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Right. I have a very important question for you, Dina. Are simps always sus? Are simps always sus? In the traditional sense, yes. If I get someone and they immediately are simping for me without knowing mm-hmm. anything about me, I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, why are you, you don't, you know nothing about me other than, especially online. Yeah. You've only heard my voice. Right. You may not have even seen me yet. Why are you doing this? That's very, like, I'm always suspicious in those situations of someone who doesn't know me and is giving me lots of attention mm-hmm. based on one thing, you know? Yeah. That they may know about me. But yeah, that's 150% sus. I can't trust it. No, you shouldn't. Honestly, you shouldn't. You should question all that. Yeah. It's like like if you were to go out in public and some stranger being quote unquote super nice comes up to you, starts getting a little too close, but they seem nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's gonna put up some some red flags in your mind. Like, why are you getting close to me? Mm-hmm. Like, we need to be aware of these things. Like, there are reasons that 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 triggers right. a, a a reaction from you, and like th- a negative reaction. I think it's the entitlement of it all, because as we know, sometimes entitlement and really feeling like you deserve something leads to some sort of outburst whether it be physical verbal whatever like you're not entitled to anything i'm not entitled to anything no one right you know what what that makes me think of people who and i'm gonna say men in general because i've only encountered men who do this in my life but maybe Mm -hmm. other people do as well but like there are men who immediately will be like hey buddy or hi, honey. Or like giving you pet names before you yeah. even like, they don't know you and they're already giving you a pet name. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't know you. Why are right. you speaking to me this way? Like they're trying to 
put up this false sense of like closeness, like intimacy that you don't have with this person. It's very strange to me. I don't trust people when they immediately go like, hey, buddy, how's it going? It's like they're conditioning you to feel a certain way about them. Yeah, I don't like because it. it's it like tricking so your brain to be all like, oh, yeah, we're in a relationship. We've known one another for years. We've known one another for two hours. <laughs> right. Like, you just met me. Why are you calling me buddy? That's weird. Stop. I am a huge user of the term babe because I'm lazy. Like, I walk around the uh, party and I'm like, hey, babe. Babe. How are you, babe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I encountered that for the first time like a few years ago, too. And I was like, whoa. No. Why are you calling me babe? What's what's happening here? I don't know you. Stop. But every once in a while, I like again because I have imposter syndrome. I'm always like, am I tricking people into liking me with all of the things I know about psychology <laughs> and all of the tricks Man. I've learned in counseling? <laughs> Master manipulator la, la, la. Over here. Or am I just living a healthy life and everyone else is? <laughs> It's a delicate lie, let me tell you. It is. Because if a stranger comes up to me and in the first two sentences is using a pet name with me, I'm like, nope. No. And it's like. too friendly there, guy. It's usually not until we're on like a we see one another weekly basis or whatever. Like if I am in a group full of friends, everybody's getting babe. Hey, babe. Right. Hi, babe. (laughs) Right. I feel like that's a little different with you when you're with friends versus like literally. I'm talking like literally a stranger. Literally. Literally. You don't know me. You don't know my Or like someone thing. who touches your shoulder or your arm or something. Whoa, guy. Although. Slow down. Don't touch me. I don't know if I've just been conditioned to ignore when people touch me, but like I never notice. People are like, remember we had that weird teacher who would always rub our shoulders? And I'm like, did we? Did that happen to me? And they were like, 100% it happened to you. And I'm like... Honestly, it doesn't happen that much to me because I think I give off, like, very, like, fuck off vibes to strangers. Mm -hmm. But, like, if somebody straight... Like, if a stranger came up to me now and was, like, put their hand on my arm or my shoulder, I would have been like, ninja! Ninja. Nope! Don't fucking touch me, man! Don't come near me! What are you doing? Like, instant negative vibes i feel like you and i are the opposite of simps (laughs) oh yeah i don't i can't tell you the last time i simp for somebody which actually makes me feel a little broken Mm -hmm. that i don't simp for someone i don't know if you ever feel that way but for me it's like i feel like wait do i actually just like don't like people at all am i like not suited for anyone because i don't simp for anyone but right i don't think it's i don't think i'm supposed to feel that way i Mm -hmm. think that just means i'm an independent like, sure of myself kind of person. And I just want someone who, you know, I do get, like, shy. I get shy with people. Like, yeah. especially people I like. And I think that's normal. But, like, it's it's not an obsession for me. It's not an obsession. One, like, once I get over the initial hormone rush and, like, the, ooh, you're new. Yeah. And, like, I actually start seeing you as, like, the complex human that you are. I'm always like, okay, now we weigh the pros and cons. Are you a romantic partner? Are you a friend? Or are you someone I start slowly dissipating from? Because my dumbass will always go, like, balls to the walls first. I love people. I love collecting stories. It's part of the reason we do this once a week. And then you end up with a slew full of people where you're like weeks in and you're like, should I be hanging out with you? <gasps> like, wait a second. Now nice. I know you more. And I'm like, right. hold on. Yeah. All right. That happens to me too. Are you Manifestations. Ready? Manifestations and takeaways. So my biggest takeaway from simp culture and my specific simp is that I now know That my relationships have to go beyond flattery and bullshit. And, like, really there's, like, a month cap on that. If we're still just on, like, flattery and bullshit and we haven't gone deep on things, then why? Like, why why am I investing time and energy in this? Like, I want someone... And this is, like, friendships, too. I don't appreciate having simps for friends because I feel like you don't grow when everyone's just complimenting you that's true it's not deep right 
And it I, it's like superficial. Yeah, I can't prepare myself for internet trolls if all of my friends are telling me all the time how wonderful I am. Right. Like it's not realistic. So I want someone who is real with me. And as always, I have to manifest this every week. I want a partner who is a beta with alpha tendencies. Like I'm the alpha. I'm the leader of this household. However, I don't want everything to be easy for me. If there's no push, I get bored. You're boring. Every once in a while, I need an adrenaline rush. Right. And then, so for the particular simp in my life, what I really hope for you is that you you eventually do the work in exploring your inner confidence and strength and what you actually want for partners and female companions. Because if you're always just basing that on looks and your gut reaction and that first hormone rush, because you're deeply lonely then you're never actually going to find a partner who like loves you for you and grows with you and whatever. And we're just going to be stuck in the cycle of you whining to me on the phone because women are interested in you, but you don't actually know what makes these women interesting to have conversations with them that make them feel connected to you. Right. What about you? So for me, I think a couple things. So one is that, the commonality between simps is that they are always over the top nice. Mm-hmm. And that can be a reason why people don't set boundaries with simps and say, no, I don't like this or whatever. Cause you're like, Oh, they're nice. I don't want, I, I should, I should be, you know, maybe I should be grateful for this, but uh-huh. here's the thing. If, if a simp comes into my life and they start violating my boundaries, mm-hmm. um, I want to be strong enough to say, don't do that. No, I don't like this, which I think I have not always been that strong to say those things. Um, at the same time, I, I think it's easy to fall for someone who's a simp because yeah, it is nice to have compliments and it is nice to have someone who, um, you know, is supportive and all these things, but it's also like, it's very superficial. It's very, Um, it doesn't challenge you right? and it doesn't put you on the same level. I feel like a simp will always be at a lower, uh, power. You know, there will always be this power thing between you where the person being simped for will be higher and the person simping will be lower. And that's not what I personally am looking for. I'm looking for someone who's on an equal level with me. And that's very hard for me to admit, I think, because that means when you find someone where you're at the same level, there's almost a, there's a little bit of a, like a clash. Cause you're like, you're figuring it out and you're like, Oh, like Mm -hmm. this person's not going to be hunky dory all the time, or they're going to tell me the truth or they're not going to sugarcoat things. And actually I think that's quite healthy to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't, who doesn't just, you know, sugarcoat things to make you feel good or to make you whatever they're honest with you. And so that's what I, you know, look, I'm looking for myself in the future is someone who can challenge me, uh, for Moses in particular, (laughs) you know, uh, you are the good kind of simp. He has figured that he has, he knows every good and bad thing about me and he's still there to support me, uh, no matter what. And so I, I truly hope that Moses, um, is taking care of himself and takes care of himself as much as he wants to be there for me as well. So, um, I hope that for him and wish that for him, but, uh, I appreciate you so much. Moses, if you're listening to this, you, the good one, you're the good one, you, the good one out there. So, all right, let's do some plugs. So this is episode eight of To All the Men I've Tolerated Before. Hopefully by now you've made sure to like and subscribe. So I'm going to give you a bonus activity, which is sharing our posts on Instagram to your story. Because I do that for every podcast I listen to. And that's how I got bold enough to slip into everyone's DMs. So if you're on the fence on whether or not you could write to Dina and I, 
about the simp in your life or the mentor who uh, didn't really help you out and now you have to unlearn things from them or anything that we've talked about, start off by putting us in your story and then we know you, there's a false confidence in our friendship and now we can start a dialogue. (laughs) There we go. And that's what dreams are made of. And that's what dreams are made of because the only way Dina and I are going to continue this confidence in doing this podcast is if people listen. (laughs) Please listen, guys. Yes. Even if you hate us, shit on us if you want. I mean. And if you are my personal friend and you have heard all of these stories before and you're like, why do I tune in next week? Just like play it for your pets while you're at work. <laughs> just like unless it makes them scream, then you could just mute it and still hit play. You know what I'm saying? Like that was fine. Um. So and then always leave us a five star review and a comment about what you're enjoying, and we can start highlighting great reviews. If you don't want to listen, uh, leave a review because it's too much pressure. Just click the five star button. If you want to go give us one star, just please kindly stop listening. Just stop hate listening to us. <laughs> Hilarious, honestly. And then you can follow us at Instagram at Men I've Tolerated Pod, and my personal Instagram page is Natalie K one two four. And recently, I have started my new blog full of my art projects and my inspirations. I'm hoping to get some of my tarot readings and magical rituals on there. Um, I was just drafting a new post this morning that kind of goes into that. And it is at nataliesinspiration.com. So if you want to know a little bit more about me and all of the like chaotic stuff that I'm always doing in this house by myself, that would be a really great way to get a look at my journal. And then email us questions about your relationships or anything you need advi- advice on at men I've tolerated before at gmail.com. There's no punctuation in our email or our Instagram handle. Yep. And if you want to follow me personally, you can on Instagram. My handle is ms period caboose, C A B O O S E. I'll have links to my Twitch and other social media so you guys can uh, watch me game. Uh, And I think I have a dream. I think I have a dream that I would, like, interact, like, create a Discord if people Mm -hmm. were, like, interested in that uh, to communicate with you guys, like, on a more intimate level uh, and and post and share content. So I think that would be a really cool concept if enough people are interested in it. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Give us a follow. Give us a follow. You never know. Dina and I might find things to raffle off at some point i mean i can't hang up all of the art that i do (laughs) yeah i mean i got like dirty socks if you want (laughs) you want a dirty sock for sure i'll raffle one (laughs) i'm kidding by the way no please just start raffling off your dirty socks socks to the men who give us one star reviews because we're not telling them that they're loved for and special (laughs) hilarious for All every right. five star review you get a dirty sock <laughs> but you have guys? to pay for postage oh, yeah. shipping and handling please <laughs> alright bye everyone we'll see you next week <laughs> bye